Hey, brother! And throughout the years at Hogwarts, we get to see inside a lot of Harry's classrooms, but some of the subjects they just don't mention or completely skip over. Like Professor Sinestra, who teaches astronomy. Do you even remember that name? Or how about Professor Vector, that arithmancy witch Ron said that one time. Like, what's her deal? I want to know about her, but sadly we probably won't ever really find out too much because Harry never took arithmancy, even though apparently it was Hermione's favorite subject. I wouldn't care, except anytime she said arithmancy, I'd be like, what on earth is arithmancy? Is it like, is it like math for wizards? Because it does seem like they should still need to know like, some math, doesn't it? Like in Goblet of Fire, Ron's dad can't even tell the difference between the number five and the number 20 on like British notes. And yet we're supposed to casually believe that wizards can easily calculate 17 sickles into a galleon and 29 canuts into a sickle. Doesn't making change in the wizarding world sound like a nightmare? I mean, who deals in 17s? Okay, that's 17, 34, 51. Is 51 not a prime number? the more you know. It feels like it should be a prime number. In any case, we have done some digging and discovered what arithmancy actually is. And what's awesome is that it's one of the only wizarding classes that you as a muggle could actually do yourself. It turns out, yes, arithmancy is sort of wizard math, at least in that it involves numbers and a lot of adding. Where the magic comes in, though, is interpreting the numbers to predict the future and establish connections between different people, places, things, or whatever. The word arithmancy is actually derived from two Greek words, arithmos and mantia, which mean numbers and divination, respectively. Which is hilarious, because Hermione famously hates divination itself, which is just interpreting different shapes and symbols to predict the future, but loves arithmancy, which is essentially the same thing except with math, which if you ask me, totally adds up. <laughs> But so how does it work? Well, the main clue we get from the books is the textbook Hermione has for arithmancy, which is called Numerology and Grammatica. Now, I'm certainly no expert in a numerology or anything, but I understand the basics enough in that it's mostly learning what you can about a person via the letters of their name. Each letter of your name would be assigned a number from one to nine based on this chart. So for example, Jonathan Carlin would look like this. Then you would take Take all of those numbers and reduce them by adding them together. Mine add up to 59, which you would then reduce again by adding the two digits together. That would make 14. And then one more time until you have a single digit, 1 plus 4 equals 5. 5 would then be my character number, which I would then probably go and look up in Numerology and Grammatica and learn the meaning of. Now, I don't personally have a copy of Numerology and Grammatica, but I did find a handy chart online that breaks down the meaning of each different number. 5 is the number of instability and imbalance, indicating change and uncertainty. Fives are drawn to many things at once, but commit to none. They are adventurous, energetic, and willing to take risks. They enjoy travel and meeting new people, but may not stay in one place very long. Fives can be conceited, irresponsible, quick-tempered, and impatient. But quick-tempered? I did what? No! Now, personally, I am not totally sold on that description, but it's not the only number you can calculate. If you apply the same formula with just the vowels of your name, you'll come up with your heart number, and if you do just the consonants, you'll end up with your social number. Now, each of those numbers actually uses the same chart to determine meaning, but tells the meaning of different parts of your personality. The character number is best used to determine people's compatibility, i.e., if you have the same character number, you're probably going to get along. The heart number is your inner self, your desires and fears, and the social number is your outer self, the one you let the world see. And yes, I agree, it does kind of sound pretty bogus. It's sort of like horoscopes, except now there's lots of fun math involved because everyone knows what horoscopes was missing was math. Yay. Well, the good news is we found an arithmancy calculator online, so you don't have to do the math. I'll put a link in the description. And the fun news is that even though I would place no stock by this in real life, it is a class taught at Hogwarts, meaning that in the wizarding world, there must be something to it. So with that in mind, Ben, Derek, and I got to work calculating the character, heart, and social score of every name, creature, and magical object we could think of in Harry Potter. And some of the connections were 
kind of unbelievable. For example, the first thing we stumbled upon was some really basic things like, oh hey, Harry and Ron have the same character score of two and that should mean they're best friends. And they are, and Hermione's character score is four and like two and two is four, so yeah, Harry, Ron, and Hermione together make sense as great friends. James and Sirius also have the same character score of seven and again are best friends, so that's cool. But what makes this complicated is that the more you look up, the less it makes sense. Because do you know who else has the same character number as James and Sirius? Voldemort and Umbridge, and Rubius Hagrid, and Phileas Flitworth, and Godric Gryffindor, and do you see how maybe all these people aren't so chummy, maybe? Or maybe they are compatible, but just happen to choose different sides. But what was really fun was when two things happened to have the exact same score. Like, check this out. Albus, Percival, Wolfric, Brian, Dumbledore, and Order of the Phoenix come out to the exact same thing. Like, what are the odds of that? Also, fun fact, did you know that Order of the Phoenix was originally going to be called Dumbledore's Army and Harry's group of students was going to be called the Order of the Phoenix? Tom, Marvolo, Riddle, and Borgen and Burks also come out to the exact same score. Which is crazy, I agree. But what's even weirder is that Albus, Percival, Wolfric, Brian, Dumbledore, Order of the Phoenix, Tom, Marvolo, Riddle, and Borgen and Burks are actually all sharing the same score. So at seven, five, and two, character, heart, and social, Dumbledore and Tom, Marvolo, Riddle are basically the same. And you know what? When you go to the chart of meaning, it actually still makes sense. How comforting of a phrase is the chart of meaning, by the way? Like, oh, what's wrong? Oh, I don't know. Allow me to consult the chart of meaning. Sevens are perceptive, understanding, and bright, seriously scholarly, and interested in all things mysterious. I dare say that would describe both Dumbledore and Voldemort. Five as the heart number would mean that internally they are irresponsible, conceited, and quick-tempered, which again, I think fits if you're honest with yourself about Dumbledore. Twelve-year-old hair, you can handle that uh, basilisk, can't you? Good, all right, I'll be over here. And for the two, the social number, it literally says opposing forces, day and night, good and evil. It's like weird, right? But don't worry, it gets even better. Adorably, sharing the number 577 are Molly Weasley and Arthur Weasley. Aw. Perfect as always. Although, oddly, Helga Hufflepuff is also a 577, which really just makes me think even more that Ron should have been in Hufflepuff. Turn this stupid fat rat yellow. Or perhaps that reveals more about the nature of Gryffindors, that you must choose to be brave. I know just what to do with you. Gryffindor! Another interesting group of characters lands at 265. Just listen to this list. How perfect is it? Lily Evans, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Death, Fox, Ignotus Peveril, that's the one that Harry is descendant from, and, wait for it, J.K. Rowling. Another important part of arithmetic is the number nine, which represents completion and achievement to the fullest degree. For example, Fred Weasley's character number is a six and George's is a three. Together, they are a nine. They complete each other. But with that in mind, guess what you get when you run Godric, Rowena, Helga, and Salazar through all together at the same time? Nine, nine, nine. Spooky, right? But don't worry, it gets better. Maybe the three men most responsible for Voldemort's downfall are Dumbledore, Snape, and Harry. And if you run their three first names, Albus, Severus, and Harry through at the same time, guess what you get? Nine, nine, nine. The names Harry Potter and Tom Marvolo Riddle run together? Nine, nine, nine. And like, I don't really brag or anything, but Jonathan Lewis Carlin is just my full name, also nine, nine, nine. Just saying. And if you want to remove my middle name and just do Jonathan Carlin, it matches Harry James Potter at 586, which also matches, and I'm not kidding, the chosen one. And if you're wondering about the rest of the office, Benjamin Pratt Carlin matches Ron Weasley at 274. And Derek Knobbenbauer is the same as heir of Slytherin. So, you know, like, watch out for him. Derek, you don't happen to have a uh, secret chamber somewhere in the office that we don't know about. Do you? Now, do I think J.K. Rowling was actually using some sort of numerology when she was developing the names for various Harry Potter characters? Almost absolutely not. Because while it might seem amazing that there's so many coincidences, even that is sort of subject to debate. Because we're searching for three digits, right? So you might think, you know, oh, there's 999 possibilities. But of course, anything with a zero in it doesn't count because that's not a possibility. So remove all of those from play. And then obviously anything under 111 wouldn't count either. But so what? That's still gotta be like 
close to 800, right? Wrong. One of the weird thing we noticed as we started charting all of these names out on a giant spreadsheet was a particular diagonal that all of the names seemed to be allowed to land on. In fact, there was only 89 possible combinations of numbers. And of course, I'm cherry picking all the fun ones to tell you about. There's others where it makes way less sense, like it's harder to draw comparisons between Hermione Granger, the cursed child, and the giant squid, all of which land on 449. Unless the cursed child from the play actually is Hermione and she eventually becomes the giant squid and travels back via time turner to the school. No. No. But either way, looking up all of these different things and trying to draw connections between the characters via their arithmetic score was super fun. So I will include a link to that spreadsheet we showed earlier where you can see the rest of our results, as well as a link to the arithmetic calculator, the chart of meaning, and an article that just includes way more in-depth information about arithmetic. Then my question for you and everybody else is, what was your score? Does it match your personality or is it in fact way off? Also, let us know if if you find any other fun connections. Another one I didn't quite mention was that Newt and Tina land on the exact same score, which is so adorable, but then so do Kowalski and Snape, so yeah, that's harder to make sense of. Unless Kowalski is a triple agent and he's going to betray Newt, but eventually actually be saving him and... These socks are amazing! And a special thanks to these patrons who support Super Carlin Brothers on Patreon. If you'd like to know how you can get your name on one of those cards, or if you just want to be a greater part of the Super Carlin Brothers community and come hang out with us on our Discord server, I totally recommend you check out our Patreon page and investigate all of those rewards. But guys, as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like the video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you would like to see us rank, all of Harry's Defense Against the Dark Arts professors, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to learn Slughorn's Dark Secret, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.